What up, my dudes, and welcome back to How to Make Your Own Latex Halloween Mask Part 2. So in this part, we are covering basically how to get sculpting, how to actually physically put the clay onto that little armature, and how to build up what you want to build. So what you're going to be following me along with is my new creation that I'm still working on, which is the Silent Hill Nurse. Yes, I've been wanting to make this forever, and finally we're doing it together. So you're going to be getting to see, again, all the steps throughout the creation of it. If you guys have any questions, do not hesitate, slap that down in the comments. I will answer as best as I can. And wait for the end because the end I'm gonna kind of wrap it up for you and let you know if there's anything you might be missing and whatnot. So enjoy, it is a long one, but again, you get to see the whole process happen. All right, so first things first, you wanna get started sculpting. We're gonna go ahead and get our clay heated up enough so that we can actually maneuver it. So this is still really hard. I like putting my clay in literally two minutes at a time. Not more than that. I've had a scary moment where my microwave didn't have such a good time. So I always stick with a minute to two minutes. It's kind of safe. Stay close, make sure nothing happens. And yeah, it should melt good. In the meantime, my sculpture is prepped in the sense that there is no other clay on it still. I am gonna be doing a half mask. That is why I chose this old, uh, crappy statue that I still have going because I literally will only have to crack it off the front and you know what it served me well I figured we'd use this one because then I could save these two back ones for over the head options because it's way easier to demold so let's well, just waiting for this to melt uh-huh uh-huh my iPad for my tunes all right, so we're gonna test again, see if this is warm enough. This is literally, you just pick yourself up a really not so great microwave, like used one, let it be your beat up one that you're gonna use specifically for this. Do not put food in there. All right, so you can see, so this means it's super hot, okay guys? So what I like to use is, let me see, how, <laughs> it's a wooden, it's like a wooden tool, okay? And it's full of dog hair, don't worry about that. So my wooden tool here, I like to poke at it to kind of ha like have that liquidy stuff help melt the other pieces. If I was to stick my hand in there right now, it would, it, it would hurt, you know? You guys ever get, uh, what's that word, like candle waxed? Yeah, so it's about the same kind of feel. You don't want that. Wait for it to cool a bit, but this is perfect. I'm not gonna put it in anymore, there's no reason to. And I'm going to use this as my little shoveler. So we're going to put this on next to my mask. And now it's time to wait so we can start slobbing it on. Here we go. As you can see here, it's actually getting nice and still creamy, but solidifying. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to benefit from that. And I'm going to go ahead and start slobbing it on.
Now that I have an overall base on it, now I can start actually adding the building blocks. So the basics of what we want, what we're sculpting's shape to look like. So let's get melting some more clay. I almost used all of this. So I'm gonna do that and let's go. So it's nothing magnificent right now. It's literally just now covered with clay. A bit like when you do a base coat of, oh, I see that. Oh, we're missing it right there. A bit like when we are putting on a base coat of paint, you kind of just want to do like an overall coating, right? Because now we'll be able to pile on and on and on to be able to get the shapes that we want. Yay. All right, so normally my dudes, um, I would definitely have a bunch of uh, printed out pictures of obviously the Silent Hill nurse and just some, like different positions and whatnot to be able to try and get it as close as possible as I want to the character, right? But what I've been doing over the last couple of days is really, you know, watching clips of like from the games and really compiling it in my head because I also want to make this a bit original. So right now I'm going to be starting off more freestyling, going off of what's in my head. My biggest focus right now is going to be keeping, you know, making sure that my eyes stay at the same height, the nose, obviously, because you need to breathe, you know, when you wear a mask too. Um, and just, you know, keeping in mind the location of the mouth. So we're going to get started. I just got my clay heating up and it's melting and uh, yeah, let's get her done. So a big part of getting your clay warmed up is you want it to like be at this perfect temp. Because when you heat it up too much, it's like lava. You don't want that. You want it like just before, or even if you get it to lava, you just gotta then wait for it to cool down a bit. So I'm looking at this. Although squishy, not squishy enough. We're gonna chuck it in there for a bit more. There we go. All right, my dudes. So right now I got my clay all nice and melted and it's kind of perfect. You can see it's like lava-y, like very soft, but also a bit harder. So this is basically what I want to start with to start shaping her up. So again, we're working on the Silent Hill nurse. Um, the Silent Hill nurse is very simple looking, right? Like she's kind of just like, she's depicted in many different places looking, you know, either as if she's just bandaged up or in others where she's more like demony, almost a bit Cenobite-ish or like remember McFarlane toys, those tortured souls. So I'm gonna kind of play off of like my imagination here and also just years of gameplay. <laughs> yeah. I am gonna focus on making this kind of like, uh, I have, I've been debating, is it a full over the head or a half? I've kind of really wanted to make it more of a half mask, but I think I'm gonna go with the flow. Because what I've seen a lot is the back of it tends to like lace or like it can have like this like a demony kind of like squished together look. So right now I'm kind of just roughly putting on the next layer. Cause in my other, like in the video before that we were making guys, we were just kind of getting the base, right? We're just kind of covering her completely with clay. Now we're in shaping mode. So what's fun about shaping mode, what's fun about it? I mean, it's kind of weird. Shaping is like, again, your, your sculpture is probably not gonna look exactly like how you want it to, but what we're doing is we're building like the, the base of it, if that makes any sense, yeah. Basically building the bigger shapes <laughs> underneath. So building that up, I wanna build a bit more up on the side. This head that I'm using is a pretty small head. Like, it's pretty similar to my size head, which is fairly tiny. So I'm okay to add more. What I do wanna do and start doing now is we're gonna build up that frow bone. So we know those eyeballs are here still. That's kinda like you wanna keep, you wanna keep track of that. Cause obviously if you're making this a mask where you want people to be able to see out of and if they want to wear it somewhere, make it a bit functional. Of course you don't have to, like my chatter, it was made full on to be something that's more like a prop, you know, like a display piece. 
but I really think it'd be fun to wear the Silent Hill nurse, right? And be able to walk around, say like if you want to go to like a horror con with it. There we go. Now the cool part is too, the Silent Hill nurse is again demony. It's not too smooth. You have some pictures of it like looking really smooth, but it has like this demon-esque type texture. So I'm gonna kind of continue along with that. The nose itself, you don't really see it at all. So I'm just gonna keep adding a bit more clay to her because I wanna build that up. And I'm almost gonna start flattening up this part. Because that's kind of the scary thing about the nurse in a way. She's human-esque, but she's not. Yeah. Smash this here. Yeah, this is gonna be one of those creatures that we're gonna make that we're just, like, we're gonna be looking at it like, okay, like, is this even turning into something? And I mean, it is, but there. So again, just add a bit more here. I kind of want to level out this area. It's kind of weird to think about a demon, but that's also a bit feminine looking, like jawline wise. And just more like circular. I guess I'm going for soft edges. But also, it's kind of cool that it's going on this way because it's giving a texture to it in a weird way. It's kind of what we want. Sometimes you do this part of your mask and what you have to do then is do a lot, like a hell of a lot more detailing afterwards, you know, to be able to smooth it out and stuff. But yeah, I think this is gonna work more in our favor because we do want something weird and textury. Now, the way I've seen her and the way I'd like to depict her is I kinda wanna play off this weird stretchy bandage skin look. So this is going to be the tough part. Because you got to see out of here. So technically this could kind of be a place where we can make visibility a bit more apparent. Also we can play with this because I kind of said bandages, right? Welcome to my brain guys. One thing I really like to do is to kind of go with the flow. Which, like, obviously when you're doing, like, a character that's, like, a specific look, say, like, Michael Myers, you gotta kind of go with who he is, right? Like, you can't really get too, too creative about it. But that's why I didn't want to start off with too many pictures on my side with this one. They're more in my brain.
I'm kind of pretending this is like a clay bandage over top. I have no tool, I am using my nails. <laughs> Any of you girls with beautiful nails, if you're into mask making, it ain't worth it. <laughs> the amount of times that I'd break those paid for nails, you have no idea. Yes, you know what, maybe for shows, but it ain't worth it if you're getting artsy. I mean, maybe you're delicate with your hands. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Not this guy. There. So again, guys, this is another eye, right? So I'm just gonna kinda keep it as a reference for myself here. Doesn't mean that this is what it's gonna have to just like look like, but I wanna know that I got eyes here and I should probably have some outlet for an eyeball over here. And of course, these Silent Hill nurses wear like a cute little hat, right? That's another reason why I'm kind of like, it could totally be like a little half mask that then ties cute in the back with gauze. Ooh, that's a cool idea. I'm always brainstorming. <laughs> now, mouth-wise, you see so many different things. But I think I'm going to kind of, like again... We have a lot of these, like the bandages kind of going around. I think this is just, you see how like my clay is kind of weird here? I feel like that's just because I have so many different kinds of clays mixed right now. Guys, I usually bounce from medium to soft. And in the past I used a lot of hard clay too by Monster Maker. So it's about, it's pretty funny when you start mixing it all. The textures will get a bit weird, but. It works. The nose. I'm just gonna go like this for now. I feel it. I feel the direction it's going. Also, it helps when you have something like, you know, there to be able to look at what you're working on. What I like to do a lot too is step back. Give yourself 10, 15 minutes, go grab some water, chill out, do some push ups. <laughs> but then come back to what you're working on because you need that. If you don't give yourself that time, sometimes you get too lost in what you're doing and you're gonna step back eventually and just be like, oh shit. Or, and it's better to do it kind of like as you're going rather than after, right? Because, I mean, it's happened to me before where I've made like a whole mess. Like Mr. Glasgow is a perfect example of that. I just kept going and going and going. And then I finally stepped back and I'm like, man, I really don't like this. I, yeah, I'll have to show you the video of behind the scenes me making him. Because he went through like a lot of different looks. And I'm happy I settled with how he is now. He's one of my faves. He's so scary. So, I mean, I'm kind of just trying to do like a, a bandage look. So I'm like flattening it a bit. And I'm just trying to like follow it, right? You know, like bandages around your head, like when you have a toothache, kind of following this line I have going and it's working. It's got a look. I'm gonna bring you guys up close with it in a second. Sucks, I really wanted to work out today. Out, uh, outside today guys but my table didn't make it through the ice storm <laughs> I was using a crappy old picnic table and I guess it happens there you go rough shapes rough shapes looking good it's like I'm kind of like making these in imaginative borders for myself little markers you guys ever play like link to the past and or like the one on like the ds you can make notes on it you just make notes on your sculpture and it, it like helps you reference to like what you've got going on it's like my little rough line like yeah i want that there i 
Also, I like that it has these like levels. Let's keep that going. Like here. And then it's a bit here. Like, yes, that's what I want. And it's always so fun when you're making something and you're like, ah, like you see it coming alive, you know? This could even go here because it's like it connects with the one under here. Well, it's fun. This is gonna be like one of those like weird puzzles where you gotta be like, where does the pipe go? What does it connect to? Welcome to my life. I'm going to pop this one here because this is like under but over. This one's going to go here. The other thing is we're going to want to actually let it dry a bit all over because then I'll be able to go in after and I'll be able to sculpt it a bit better. Because right now it's really soft, right? This is our, again, we're shaping. We're getting our general shape down. This ain't no detailing. It ain't gonna be no masterpiece right away. It's very much like, where do you want it to go? Where do you want your eyes? Where do you want your nose? Those breathing holes. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna put this over top. Yeah. Got excited. Sometimes you're too strong, guys. And this is always like, I don't know. I like kind of blasting through this part because the next part's where you actually get to get a bit more creative and like thinking into it and really making it come alive. This is just like, let's build it up. Especially with the, like the character I picked is kind of really weird for you guys, but uh, shit, I want to get this done. So I figured two birds, one stone, right? Might as well work through it with you. Yeah, I think that's a pretty big face. The majority of the time too online, you see that it's really just this part. And that's awesome. Like, I'm gonna stick with that, I think. That whole look of just the face. Some of them you see and it almost looks like it's like rotten flesh. And then the other ones you see are more pinky. So I kinda, I think I wanna be in between of that. I mean, paint jobs too, you can do whatever the hell you want, right? So I'm gonna bring you guys nice and close to see where we're at right now. So do you get the idea of what I'm saying when it comes to like building up your shapes? So I'm kind of like building up these weird, this is my so-called bandages, you know? And again, you can still see my eyes. I'm so focused on keeping my eyes right around here. My nose is still around here. My mouth is still around here. You can see it almost a bit more on this side, the whole um, vibe of those and like again the band on top that silly bandage look but not bad so far this is gonna be my base so next up on to details all right my dude so it's time to do some detailing at this point with our new spooky silent hill nurse uh we're gonna be using the following tools to begin so we're gonna be using one of these guys don't ask me what it's called. It looks like half a bean. It's just like a metal plate kind of thing. It's great for basically um, smoothing out like sides and stuff. Anyways, you're gonna get to see me use it. The next one, one of these guys, it just helps rake and make shapes. This thing has two little balls on either end, one smaller, one bigger. This is fantastic. Um, one of these guys, this helps for texturing. This is like a rubber thimble. And I do like having my texture Sam Sandy. So depending on what kind of look we're going for, we're going to be using different types of textures, obviously, to then make that overall pant out fancy ass look. So let's go, let's get this started with what we got going. I'm gonna go ahead and do some smoothing first. So there we go.
So right now I'm using that little rakish tool just to kind of help myself make those divides some more along those faux bandages I got going. Also, you can kind of hoop out certain areas like that. Rough it up, create those gaps. Again, always be careful of creating, um, always be careful from creating undercuts. So I'll have to explain that in another video, but um, undercuts is basically, you don't want to make your clay so that there's space for the cement to then kind of like lock onto. So yeah, I'm digging like little trenches here, but we're not gonna go that deep and we're not gonna make it like hook. So there, get that going. And again, we're going with the flow. I have no real concrete end plan for this. It's all kind of coming from my head right now and from what I remember from playing the games and from seeing pictures. I highly suggest, kind of like I did with my grandma mask, it's always really good, guys, to have yourself a bunch of reference photos, um, depending on what you're doing. I'll probably end up bringing out the reference photos once we start detailing these more to make them look like bandages and such. But for now, I'm just kind of having fun. Yeah. There, so. At the same time, I'm kind of making, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to smooth it out a bit. I kind of want, like, some kind of, because what it, when we slapped it on before, guys, I was really going, like, rough with it. So you kind of want to smooth it a tad, which is what that other tool is going to help with a lot, too. This one's great, too. You kind of go do like cross hatching with it. it really helps that's a tin foil in there god damn it sometimes it's good to put tin foil on your base especially if you're like building up a certain type of um shape underneath but uh, i also find it really messy to try and then get off so there we go I'm gonna give you guys another angle here just so you guys can kind of see a bit more from my point of view so i'm basically just trying to make that little guide this is obviously going to be able to go down more on either side again that comes with the more detailing we do but this is kind of making my little pathway you know what like this get nice and rough just for fun oh i'm a bandage I'm like cross, crisscross, there you go. There, like, I feel like there is no right or wrong way. When I, I mean, okay, there probably is, let's be real, but like, it all depends on what you're going for, right? Sculpting is a magical part of the process because again, you can change it as many times as you want. You're gonna get to learn just like I did. It's also learning about when to pull away, when to finally step back and be like, okay, I'm done. Kind of just trying to give a rough texture of that. Just to, again, it also helps me as the creator visualize it a bit more. Now this is really, like what I'm using is kind of thick to be doing this. I should probably be using my other tool, but whatever. I'm having fun, it's working. here, to there, we'll go for this guy just so you can get an idea. This one I love using for like eyeballs and to like eyeball stuff, just doing a rough I don't really care about symmetry right now. This is a demon nurse who's been hanging out in an old hospital and probably like an old school for like way too long on that dark side. 
because it's Silent Hill, right? This is like the kind of the other one that's on the other side. So, yeah. Kind of starting to get those bandagey vibes going. The eyeballs and stuff, like that's gonna come with time. We're gonna have to kind of go along with that and then decide in detail what we want those spots to really look like. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do guys is put this on time lapse as I go. Just so, I mean, you just got a gist of it up close. So now you can see it develop a tad more. <laughs> All right, perfect example of what an undercut would be, guys, is right here. So, you see how I haven't filled up this pocket with clay? So, what would happen is, if I went ahead to try and mold this, what would happen is the cement would go in behind here. And when you go to break it off, it would literally, it would like peel this back. So, how do you fix that? You go around your entire sculpture and you make sure that it can't get under. Okay, sometimes it can affect the look of what you're going for. But now, look, I still have like a cool like divot, but it ain't gonna get trapped. <laughs> so that's what you basically wanna work, look, sorry, watch out for. It's important. All right, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> All right, my dudes, so because I have a solid rough texture of what I want right now, now what we're gonna do is start using the blow dryer to help us melt down a bit and get a bit more into the finer details. So here we go. It's a little loud. I'll probably end up muting this, <laughs> but at least you'll be able to get a vibe for what it all looks like. It on hot, not on cold, obviously, because I want to melt it. And I'm kind of just softening out what I just did. Depending on what kind of clay you guys are using, meaning soft or hard, it'll need, you know, more heat, less heat actually make change like right now it's super soft so I really don't even have to like go over this much more Ooh. get rid of those undercuts I want it looking like it's bandage skin. Does that make sense? It's like a, a mishmash. That's my vibe I want to go for. I haven't really seen somebody do it yet. A lot of people have stuck with like the demon type of weird skin. So I'm gonna bring you up close so you can see what's going on. So you heat it up a bit, and then you wanna pull it in the direction that you're going for, right? And again, yeah, I might be getting rid of some stuff that I just did, but it's kinda what I'm going for. So 
so you can see it melting right here. This obviously had a lot of soft clay in it. And again, it's just so much easier to sculpt with, right? When it's that perfect softness. It's giving like this weird kind of porous texture, which is exactly kind of like what I'm going for. I think the main thing with sculpting is you really just don't want to see like your fingerprints and you know all kinds of weird lumps and bumps. You kind of want to make it look alive with textures. So I basically want to keep going at it like that. As you can see, the side is all rough still, or is this guy's more smoothed out? I kind of want to keep at that. Because then we can focus on shaping up the eyes and the mouth. Well, my dudes, that was a long one, right? But at least you got to see all the steps, majority in real time too. So sculpting, I'm going to say it now, it's a process that literally takes so much time. And as an artist, you guys all know, we get that issue with perfectionism where you probably want to keep going back and changing things and keep going back and changing things. And that's okay. But know that it's really important to take a step back, you know, give yourself a 15, come back, stare at it have your pictures ready, compare it, see if you love it, and it, know that there is a point where you need to literally step back and stop and go ahead and freaking mold it. So what I'm going to be slapping down right here is my next step, which is part three on how to make your Halloween mask, and that's the mold making process. So let me know again, guys, if you have any questions, and thank you so much for watching this. If you're subscribed, Again, huge thanks. I appreciate it. You're part of the fam. And if you're not subscribed yet, get on it. Be a part of it. And don't be shy to ever shout out if there's videos you'd love to see, um, especially in terms of making the mask, if it's about products and whatnot. I'm basically working on all those kinds of things now. So whatever would be most helpful, let me know. All right. You guys have a wicked rest of your day. Bye.